uh, Connor Garland had a really weird game. You know, Connor Garland is really interesting. I'm giving it a bit more thought, but <laughs> Connor Garland's a really interesting player where he's, I, I think one thing that people tend to sway on with him is that because he's a very noticeable player and he has like AKA points, some um, points, so some points that they think, oh man, no, he's always in it and he's mm-hmm. always in the thing. But the problem, like tonight, he was he was like full guns ablaze and like going, but he needed to take a step back. Like he his start was great, but then he took a tripping penalty on Jordan Kyrou. Yep, which and could then, have been. I was listening on the radio. It sounded like it could have been a lot worse. I mean, it could have been a clipping, like a, a knee on knee, almost like it it was, but it, it seemed more of like a on the toe thing. I'd have to watch the replay again. But um, so he does that, and then he. Give, he's the last man back at the blue line trying to make a move to uh, get, just get the puck down deep, deep and then gives a, a, makes a giveaway. It's a two-on-one the other way. David Perron scores to make a two-nothing. Um, and yeah, and that's just, it's it's just, you. it's really interesting to view a, a player like that that is so finesse-driven. Yeah. That you know, like when it comes to playoff time, like, man, is that going to work? Like, are you going to be able to do the 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 drag move behind the net? Are you going to be able to do like he he has amazing he does these amazing passes like these these spin passes out of out of the corner like to someone open and stuff. But um, it just seems like it's sometimes he's just playing in his own world. He kind of reminds me of me playing chell with uh with you and friends where i'm just doing hitting the hitting the spinorama button as much as possible thinking this will get myself out of this jam but yeah they were kind of they weren't harping on him they were kind of giving him an office space what is it you say you do here kind of kind of treatment on the radio where yes he can have those smart setup passes and and he can be that finesse guy you know that's always spinning avoiding checks trying to drive the play but it just doesn't seem to be as effective as it was maybe in the start of the year where we were proclaiming not if, but just how elite Connor Garland was. Mm-hmm. And it, and when I see him do those things that draw your attention to, to Garland, whether it's a spin, when it's an avo- evading a check where he's playing Montreal Canadiens hockey or doing something flashy and you notice him, or you look at the advanced stats or the fancy stats where he's got good ones because he's always putting the puck on net. It ain't necessarily the most uh, dangerous of scoring chances, but he's still doing it. Do, do Just to interrupt very quickly, do yeah. we need a button every time one of us unironically says puck on net or pucks on net? Um, yeah, we'll probably need a button, and then we'll have to correct it and say shots to the goal, because that's what we we're need, supposed to be saying. <laughs> we need just like a, like a, what is it? You remember, it's like, what's the word that Krusty uses in The Simpsons? He's like, Ah, uh, that's our word of the day. Secret word of the day, like Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah, Pee Wee Herman, just word of the day. <laughs> but um, it reminds me, it reminds me of like years ago when we had Kyle Elwood on the show, and we were talking about just playing in the playoffs, and like, and he made a great point where it's like, yeah, players in the playoffs like go around and spend their whole shift laying out like they try to be Milan Lucic against the Mess and Hat Tigers, laying big hits. But it's like, yeah, you're you're drawing the crowd, you know, you're getting the crowd going, but you're you're horribly out of position for so many you know, for your other, your teammates. And if mm-hmm. anything goes wrong, you're completely screwed in your own zone. And not that I'm saying that Connor Garland is necessarily screwed in his own zone, but it's, you always notice him, but it's not, there isn't a lot of finish to what he's doing. Well, it's just like, they, there's just a lot of, fi- it's a lot of flash and a lot of finesse mm-hmm. that results some, that results to a lot of plays dying. Yes. And sometimes when they're executed correctly, they make like a highlight reel. You're like, whoa, that's effing crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but just some, it is most of the time it ends up, the play just dies. Yeah. And um, that's kind of what I, I've been, I've been seeing with the team. I mean, as we're, we're getting to this kind of doomsday clock scenario. Where, whoa, 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 whoa. Playoff push scenario. Okay, play Wave your push. white towels, everybody. Yeah, uh, Bruce, there it is. Um, <laughs> Ryan Whitney, everybody. Ryan Whitney. Ryan, Ryan Whitney, Bruce, there it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we're going on this playoff push, and 
uh, I just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like we're seeing, like it's on again, off again. Yeah. Um, they, they are playing their fourth game in six nights. And, yeah. And they, um, yeah, they've been it's playing very well. They've been playing against tough teams. You know, on Wednesday, they had arguably their most complete impressive victory with Halakinet against the Colorado Avalanche, a, a game nobody, literally nobody gave them a, hell, a, a snowball's chance in hell of winning. And they played the most complete defensive game I've seen the Bruce there. It is boys do. And then you see the exact opposite against St. Louis, where there's just this level of comfort and they take the foot off the gas and relax. And next thing you know, everybody that has the puck on the half boards in the neutral zone just seems to give it up at every, every opportunity possible to the blues. Well, it's just it, kind it, of disheartening. Yeah. I'm well, it's, it, it, it just, I mean, I, I know we repeat ourselves every week, but it, it really does go back to the idea of like them being, this is what they are. They're not as good as they, yeah. or not as bad as they were at the start, not as good as they were not, or during the, the Bruce run. Um, but yeah, so now, you know, they, they, on Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night, they play St. Louis again. Ho- I mean, you're hoping for Jordan Bennington. You're hoping that, Hey, you know, we, we get the we get we get the auto two points from our boy um, <laughs> you know the guy who uh thought he deserved the calder um so still hope, still it, bitter it, taste it, in his mouth <laughs> yeah um it would have been really great if they had somehow managed to get two points or even one point tonight yeah um if they had managed to come back um it is just really apparent i mean you you look at hoaglander being injured you look at just their depth like it's one thing i will say um, so, you know, okay. So they trade Tyler Mott for a fourth and they replace Tyler Mott with William Lockwood, whom is essentially Tyler Mott. <laughs> I thought Matt Highmore was ty- essentially Tyler Mott too. He's another one, but he's Wait, injured week to week. He doesn't grow on the Tanner Pearson tree. I would argue that there's way more of a chance of there being a Tyler Mott tree than a Tanner Pearson. Oh, there's more of an orchard. There's just a forest. It's It's called the American hockey league. (laughs) Yeah. It's called the American hockey league. Can you skate? Uh, You like you, you, are you, are you grateful for being in the show? Then you um, You want to make a little bit less than you're worth. (laughs) Baby, you, we got a fourth line going. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So that, that was really interesting in seeing that, uh, William Lockwood, yeah, just has burn, has speed for days. Yeah, um, plays that kind of Michigan Wolverines type of style of hockey, where it's very much abrupt, like in your face um, type of hockey. But at the same time, uh, you know, you could see just on a few things, just like lack, like spatial awareness, like kind of reading play the play, reading what's around him. But he's just like he's just going. He's he has a speed and he goes, and hopefully, you know, they can rein that in. Um, but you know, then you look at your fourth line, and that's what Patan, Chase on, and um, Richardson. Yeah, Richardson, and then Could Richardson a was like one chance on Wednesday night. I mean, yeah, he, he did great for great for the whiskey boy, whiskey drinker. <laughs> Didn't hit the net, but it looked good. Didn't hit the net, but um, yeah. So now we're looking at yeah, now we're looking at like, you know, how much more, how much longer is this kind of kind of go down for? You know, they're they're playing against the clock and um, a loss tonight and a loss Wednesday. I mean, we'll see it, it entirely depends on the teams around them. Right. But if other teams are picking up points, like, you know, and even if they go ahead and they do make the playoffs, like, okay, so we're, oh, great. You, you're facing Colorado. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I, I just want to see the team, you know, salvage whatever they have left of this run of these games and make a make an uh, you know a good college try to make in the playoffs like yeah if they if they make it in and they play calgary or they play uh colorado yeah they'll i mean well they'll get to start if they play colorado but like just the fact that they got there is fine enough for me i am not i'm not hell-bent or financially invested in this team winning the stanley cup but i am emotionally invested in this team win in every trying their best to win every game and you you know you're not seeing it against I, st louis but i want to see that you know in the stretch 